Ready? Whoa! Wow! It's been played. It's dusty. It's different. It looks different a little bit. This is a little more. It's much more green than I remember it. But wow! Hello! Hi! <laughs> I like it. <laughs> wow. that. that still works. Oh, that's nice. That actually works really well. Wow. That's kind of proud of that. I always thought of it because it was 18 inches. I always thought of it as being sort of bigger and more awkward, but it actually feels kind of about right. Wow, this is really amazing to see this again. You can feel it's been uh, touched. It's got some chip marks there. So this is what, how many years? 20 years later? 20 years since I had built this? When was it, 2000? 24 years. 95. Wow, 30 years. Wow. wow. I know people who are younger than that. Hi. Hi, kid. How's it been? How have you been for the past 30 years? <laughs> it's 30 years. That's insane. Wow. Did you go to college? <laughs> Any children of your own? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what have you seen? You must have stories to tell if only a guitar could talk. Okay, now I feel better. Whew. Here, let me... Wrote that. There. You always were a messy eater. <laughs> okay, I think I'm funny. <laughs> All right. Okay, sorry if I'm embarrassing you in front of your friends. <laughs> okay, where were we? Oh, it's got a label. Right. He pr he supplied us with a label. Did he? Or did I? He must have. I don't remember doing that. I don't remember putting that in there actually, to be honest. Catching the light. Inlays always look better when you get the angle of the light just right. I believe this is not the original uh, base of the, of the uh, bridge because the original one I believe was wider and at some point in time it got turned, it got flipped the, the wrong way around by somebody doing maintenance on it and it didn't fit so what they did is they dremeled out, they hollowed it out so it wasn't making contact anywhere except the very very outer edge so it wasn't really doing its job so at some point I've replaced this but now what I would do I can see there's a huge gap between here and here because everything over time is settled in and the top the, it, the top has probably either sunk or the neck has come up a bit I would replace the very top the other thing I would do is the tailpiece I would probably lower it a hair just a hair so that there's not quite as much air up here the beauties of an arch top is you can make these adjustments. You can change the bridge, you can change the tailpiece, you can change the angle of the tailpiece. And that that is very De Quisto, is that was his thing, it was that you could raise and lower it. So you can change the down bearing on the bridge. And what I would do is I'd lower it just because I, I like the idea of it being a little lower if possible. And at the tailpiece here, you can see that there are three screws that I would loosen and then I could just pull it down a bit and change that angle just a hair. That's just the first stuff I would do right off the bat. Otherwise, I think it's been really well maintained and it's been played, which is nice to see. I really like that, actually. I knew this project was coming because I had met, I talked to Scott at a show and he had the seed of the idea in his head. So I kind of had a little more time to think about it. My uh, interpretation of what he was asking for was because Jimmy DeQuisto had just passed away. This, this was a little bit of an homage to Jimmy DeQuisto. So that was kind of how I looked at it, which is why my guitar in some ways is a little bit conservative. Um, I mean, with the split block inlays, I was trying to go traditional. The uh, tailpiece was very reminiscent of what DeQuisto did. Certainly the, the kind of the poured on t uh, bridge was very De 
Jimmy DeQuisto uh, influenced. An 18 inch guitar requires somebody to play it a lot more um, because there's more guitar to activate and to bring out. So I was really hoping that it would get played a lot, which it feels like now 30 years later that it has opened up. But at the time, I would imagine when he first got it, it would have been very quiet. Um, because, you know, it was being shared with... A lot of people played them, but not a lot. I think they all just sort of sampled them. My guitars always need a little more time to open up. That's just the way I build them. Um, but uh, the, the blue... I had already built a blue guitar because uh, Bruce Coburn had uh, started asking for his guitars to be blue. In fact, I believe Bruce was the first person to have a blue acoustic guitar. Um, and so I had done a couple of those already. So I, I was extremely familiar with, with that color. Um, I had no problem with that. But I, I think design-wise, I, I kept pretty conservative. Um, Chinnery asked for some way he could hear the guitar where he was. He wanted something kind of like a monitor. So this was, people weren't doing any sort of side ports at that time. Um, and I actually came up with the idea of putting something here. Um, I think he asked about four of us to do this. Um, and this was my interpretation of it. And right when I was about to do this, I was starting to kind of think about the design a little bit. Grit Laskin came over to my shop and he said, oh, I've done that before. And he drew on a napkin exactly how he actually designed the internal parts so you could have this r riding on some rails inside and, and keep quiet at the same time. So this was an innovation that uh, Grit Laskin actually pioneered as far as I know. Um, and then he kind of shared his information with me. So it was able, I was able to make something that actually works quite well, especially 30 years later, that's amazing. Pickguard has kind of got the DeQuisto kind of double layer, two, you know, two layers. Uh, I used ebony binding because I wanted it to be kind of classy. I wanted it to be kind of subtle and elegant. This was a bit of a departure from that. And I wanted to do my, um, this is a, an orchid that I like doing, and I've done it, several of them since, but uh, the, I, this might have been one of the first ones I did, and that was a bit of a signature for me. So it's just kind of a, for me it was kind of a straight ahead, elegant, simple, fairly straightforward design, and I tried to kind of concentrate on the sound. Um, yeah, it was fun, it was scary. It was really scary to build it, knowing there were 19 or whatever other people out there making the same instrument. None of us talked to each other about what we were doing. It was all kind of plowing ahead. It's kind of a, a, a unique experience for these guitars to kind of go through their life in this sort of cluster of, of with these great builders that are incredible builders. I mean, it was such an iconic, uh, such a, a brilliant move on his part to to ask us because uh, he gave us an excuse to interact and meet each other and become friends and bond as luthiers. And we actually, a lot of us made lifelong friendships because of this collection. It was the first time many of us had met and interacted and he not only did the guitars form a family, but so did the actual luthiers form a family. And uh, it was life changing. His this guitar was was uh, in uh, in my career was life changing because of the door that it opened. And I'm you know I'm actually forever grateful to him for having done that.